I wanted to try embroidering some stuff at home, so I bought a home embroidery machine. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. This is a PE535 by Brother. What's happening, Brother? And it's an embroidery machine, which tends to look a lot like a sewing machine. Now I picked this up because I thought maybe I could do some embroidering of stuff here at my home, whether it's towels, shirts, my undergarments, whatever. I like to put my stamp on a lot of stuff. You know, it's kind of like marking your territory. So I wanted to pick this up because this is actually a fairly new model from Brother. They have been making sewing machines and embroidery machines for many, many years. I actually had one a long time ago where my mom and I used to embroider some stuff. But that was years ago, and I'm hoping that that experience will allow me to be able to set this up and start using it right away. So, let's get this set up and take a look. So, as I'm unboxing it, I just want to show you what we get here. So, there's a power cable right here. It looks like this might be actually a plastic cover so that you can keep it dust-free. Here is one of the hoops here, so you can see... We've got a metal plate there that's how it'll clip into the embroidery machine and then you wedge the clothes or the material in between here so we get one of those and then up here we get a little pouch brush looks like spare needle we get the little bobbins embroidery scissors tiny sword to fight tiny battles then we get the manuals over here and then here is the embroidery machine itself and looks like the upper portion comes separated from the lower portion which will control that hoop all right so here are the two pieces i think you're just going to remove all this blue tape that's holding all of these parts down and then once you have that you're just going to slide these together and you can see how they connect in there so i think this is pretty straightforward so far Got it together. Now, the way this works is like any sewing machine. It draws a thread from the top and from the bottom. And so you actually have to take these little bobbins and get them filled with thread before you can embroider anything. You'll need the thread on the top, but obviously you'll need it on the bottom. Here's what a bobbin looks like. I think I'm using the right word. It might actually be a spool. I'm just gonna call it a spool. And the way you do that is up here. Now, this, is where it will wind the spool full of thread. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna push it up here. That is going to let the machine know that you are winding thread as opposed to sewing. Now, this little piece right here really doesn't do anything except applies friction. As this gets wound up with thread, it's going to eventually touch this and the friction is going to stop this. That's how you're gonna know it's done. Now. You want to take a spool of thread, and in this case, I'm going to embroider with white, and you want to take this off. This is kind of a little stop that's going to hold it on. And then you're going to take your spool here, lift that up, put a spool on top, right, just like that. And now I'm going to put my little stopper back on it, the round side down to hold that in. And then right up here, we have a little graphic that shows us how this is going to work. So you can see, it shows us that it's going to go under this little hook right here. Then it's gonna go around this tab up here, this little prong. And then you can see it's going to make a beeline back for this little piece. And it's gonna go under this little arm and then around this little cylinder. So I'm gonna loop it around the arm and the cylinder. And then we are going to attach it into the little hole here. This is easier sometimes to take it out and start the threading in there and then just wrap it around there and then put it back on. There. And then per the diagram, you wanna make sure that it is on the top here. So it's going to wind clockwise and pull that thread in. So just push it in there, all right? Now I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on. Plugged in and the power switch is right over here. And so now we see the PE535 come to life. And because I have this pushed in, I think it should know that we are in spool windup mode here. So if this little presser foot lever is down, you might have to raise that up. And now this little lit power button, I should just be able to press it. And there it goes, starting to fill that spool. And you can see that's gonna be pretty quick. And then when it fills up, it's gonna hit that little stopper and it's just going to seize it up. When it seizes up, just hit the power button again, that'll stop it. Now I can just cut this thread here, and now I have a bobbin or a spool of thread that is ready to go for the bottom portion. Now, one of the things that you'll have to do is you'll have to follow these little instructions here, and it's pretty easy, or it should be pretty easy to put this in. Basically, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that in there. 
And then you're gonna to wanna to pull the thread so it goes around this little loop there. And then you wanna follow this little track here. And that is going to position the thread in the right position so that as it's sewing, it picks up this bottom thread. Now, when you get down to this position here, there's a little blade, you can see it in there. So if I pull it all the way down, pull it right up against that blade, it's gonna trim my thread for me. And so that is ready to rock. And now I can just put my cover back on clip that in and now my bottom thread is ready to go so now I just have to set up my top thread okay now to wind the top thread I'm actually going to push this presser lever back up I think it might already be up so I'm just going to make sure that it's up like that and then what I'm going to do instead of following that dotted line pattern to spool up the bobbin I'm going to follow this solid line pattern that kind of starts the same way goes around that tab up at the top but now goes down this channel right and you can see it's all numbered, number three here. So we're gonna go under this number three arm here. We're gonna go back up, look for number four. You can see that little metal arm down there. So that's what we're gonna have to loop this on. And we're gonna start on the right side and get it looped over there. And now we're gonna go all the way back down here to the number five, which is right here. And now it might be hard to see, but number six is this little bar in front of the needle so I'm gonna grab it at number six all right once you get it under this little bar at six and I will tell you there's a little stop right there so you actually have to kind of push it all the way to the edge otherwise it's always gonna come out and then you're gonna to want to get it in this little tooth right there and then up here at seven and then there is another little cutter back here on this side at eight and so you're just gonna drag it and cut it off right there so now you can see how the thread is sitting right there now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this arm on the side here and this is going to be the threader so what happens here is when I push down on this you can see how it drags the thread down and then it is pushing it right over the hole of the needle and then using a hook to go through the needle to grab the thread and thread it so that's pretty amazing that worked really really well so now we have that needle threaded we have the bobbin filled down here and so we need to load a design and load our hoop and start embroidering something all right now you got to get whatever you're going to embroider in the hoop now i'm going to take a risk here and i'm going to embroider this front panel on my golf bag man i hope this works and you're going to want to actually lay it on the top and then use this inner hoop to push it down and so the fabric will be at the lowest part against the bottom of the sewing machine right now before i put in this panel what we also want to do is use a piece of stabilizer and this is just a piece of fabric that the thread attaches well to now this is actually a water soluble one but you can use a non-water soluble one and i am just going to go ahead and put this in now you might be saying well pete that is sideways i think we can change the orientation of the embroidery once we get in there but i'm just going to go ahead and see if i can get this to fit the hoop okay i actually pulled a smaller hoop from my inventory here to fit into this now one of the things that i'm worried about is that the hoop is not quite as offset as the hoop it comes with so hopefully we we can center it in the settings and it will work, but I'm kind of bugging about it right now. Now, one of the big things that's an advantage over the embroidery machine I had as a kid is that now you can load your embroidery files on a USB drive and actually just plug it into the Brother. You actually had to use kind of these proprietary Brother cards back in the day, and so I'm glad you don't have to do that anymore. Being able to sideload your PES files or other embroidery files, I use PES files. Now, I will say this is a 32 or 16 gig flash drive and i actually tried like a 128 gig flash drive and it wouldn't read it but it will read this one so i can just go here to the usb and i can show you that i have my embroidery files here and i want to use that full logo and hit set now you can actually rotate this depending on how you want it to embroider and i want it oriented the same way that i have this panel in here so it's going to be pointed up in that direction but if i wanted to rotate it because i had a piece of fabric in here in a different direction i could certainly just rotate it like that now i do want to move this because i have a different hoop than it's expecting and so what i want to do is just get this needle basically centered here so i am going to start moving this around 
Now, what you can see here is it's showing the needle in the position. So if I go here, I just wanna show you, this is actually really useful because right now it's saying that it's centered to the middle of the embroidery pattern. So you can see where that needle is. And I would say, yeah, that's pretty centered for me. Now, if you wanna see where it's going to go to the top, the outer edges, just make sure you're still inside the hoop. That looks pretty good. And then if I look at the bottom, that's no problem that's inside the hoop. And then right side and then left side. All right, everything looks like it is inside the hoop, so I'm not going to be outside. So that looks all right. Now I'm still a little bug in here. I'm not sure that I feel great about this, but I'm gonna trust the technology. And I'm also gonna make sure that my foot is down there. So we're in the embroidery position. And so that looks okay. I'm gonna hit embroidery here. And I feel like everything looks okay. And now I have a green button here. So my hope is that it is going to start. Now, just to quickly verify, it looks like the little green cross mark is on the right side of where the logo is gonna be, and that looks good there. So if I hit the green button here, let's see if it starts going. Man, I didn't think a sewing machine would make me this stressed out. She's still going, and I do like that it shows you with that little green cross marks where it is on the logo or your embroidery design. So pretty cool. Looks like it is sewing it nice and sharp. So I'm feeling kind of relieved, but I'll feel more relieved when it's done because I only have one of these panels. So if I screw it up, I don't have another. All right, it shows me how many stitches out of the stitches total. It also says it's gonna be a 13 minute embroidery run. Give you a few. But it's starting to look pretty good. And in fact, it's starting to put my mind at ease. Now I'm kind of worried about it running out of thread on that lower bottom, but we'll see. My fear is turning into excitement because we're almost done. Please hold up, little brother embroidery machine. And it looks pretty good, so. So far, I'm pretty happy. We'll see when it's really finished. Woohoo! All done. All right. So now to remove this, I think we just push this here, lift this up, kind of slowly drag this out. Looks like it actually cut the thread there, or I don't know if it broke unintentionally. And I do want to lift up the foot here so I can get the hoop out. So you just lift that up like that, and then it should just kind of pull out. And I'm kind of curious if the bottom thread already is cut. Man, looks like it cuts both. Is that even possible? I mean, sure looks like it did. So that's pretty nice. All right. Well, looky there. That is the final product. And that looks great. You know, I love the detail on it. And it did a great job. 13 minutes from start to finish. And then you just take your embroidery scissors and trim up those connecting threads there. But that is a result on this little PE535. So if this idiot can use this thing, you can use it too. So if you want to embroider stuff at home, shirts, bags, you know, thin cloth, really. I don't think this will work on things like towels, but shirts, undergarments, pillowcases, monogram stuff. Yeah, definitely you can. For the home hobbyist, I think this is a great little device. If you want to pick it up, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. So much deeper